Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. we got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, Ken, thanks very much, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. It's on the Borders and Borders hotline. 412-575-2600 is the number to call. You can tweet me at KD Pomp. You can tweet Gene Collier at Gene Collier. And we have a lot to get into, beginning with, of course, uh, the Steelers back to practice today, and Antonio Brown was on the practice field, even though he hasn't said so, and we'll wait till Mike Tomlin speaks tomorrow, but there's a good chance he will play, and that will give the Steelers a full complement of offensive people. When you look at this game, you think back to week five. And Gene, I want to ask you about that, because to me, that was more of an aberration. I'm not convinced that Jacksonville's capable of coming in and doing uh, damage again to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I think on offense, they're really going to be challenged. I don't think the Steelers... Um, will be, you know, even if they play bad defense, I, I haven't seen anything from Jacksonville that tells me they're going to be able to score a lot of points. And from what I saw yesterday, they're really limiting Blake Bortles. They seem like they don't want to throw the ball down the field with him at quarterback. Oh, and I forgot my. Bob, this is a, prof that's a this is professional mistake. TV here. You know who you are who called me. <laughs> I did the same thing the other night. <laughs> I can't even get the chair in the right position, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to be slow to criticize you, Bob. Uh, the ultimate rookie professional. Mistake. What was the question? Oh, uh, about, can they uh, score? Can Jacksonville score from what you saw? Well, they don't seem to have much faith in Bortles throwing the ball, that's for sure. He threw for one fewer yard than he ran for. Never a good uh, recipe. But uh, if you're thinking that this is going to be an easy time for the Steelers, I, I think that's wrong. I, I expect high drama, a close game. <laughs> um, find that amusing, Bob? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Because it's probably going to happen. It'll be a closer game than it should be. But I, I really don't think so. I think the Steelers are going to win this one with relative ease, just like they did, did last year. Did I say year. they weren't going to win it, Bob? I said I expect you high drama. High drama. A I close know. game. Drama is a big part of what they do this year. But you remember last year when the Dolphins ripped them apart in Miami? Yeah. They came back here that. on the rematch, and they ripped them apart this time. So I think the key is quick start. Get out to a big lead. Well, it's always, that's always good advice, Bob. But here's another thing I remember. Uh, the, I remember the Steelers are a seven-point favorite in this game. And I also remember that the Chiefs were an eight-and-a-half-point a half favorite last week, and they're not playing this week. Yeah, but it's not, uh, it's not the Chiefs. It's not uh, Andy Reid, who seems to have a lot of problems, you know, getting over the hump here in these playoff games. We'll see what happens. But the other game in the, yes, we'll the AFC see. is, of course, Tennessee at New England. Yeah. And I look at that game, and I'm thinking, there's no way possible that Tennessee can pull off an upset there. Well, unless. How long have you been watching this game? This league. <laughs> yeah, but do you honestly think Tennessee can go there and win? Yes. Okay. It's you're an NFL of, game. You're one of uh, the only people I know. It's an NFL that. game, and, and Jacksonville can win at Pittsburgh, too, let me tell you. Okay, so you're looking at Jacksonville, Tennessee. For no, the I'm not. You no. just said so. No, I didn't, Bob. Why are you so, so contentious know. tonight? Is that uh, mistake you made right off the bat? No, Is that, that throwing was, you off? The phone threw me off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but, uh, you know, the one thing I will say about that, and a lot of uh, attention has gone to that ESPN article, I find there's a lot of likely truth in that article some people don't mm -hmm. but you know it doesn't make sense to me gene and i never thought this made sense when you looked at bill belichick who drafted two good backup quarterbacks in jacoby Brissett and jimmy garoppolo he had insurance for a 40 year old quarterback just mm -hmm. in case that's a wise move by a smart coach and then all of a sudden he trades both in the same year basically and you're wondering why is he doing that because if tom brady does get hurt now there's only hoyer as his backup. And if Brady got his way, Belichick didn't want to get rid of those two quarterbacks. That didn't make any sense, did it? No, I think uh, if there's something to that article, and, you know, I, uh, I got nothing bad to say about that article at all, except that um, I think it did lay the groundwork for the, for the possibility that there is kind of a power struggle there, that Brady wanted Garoppolo gone, he, that maybe he went to Kraft and said, look, I'm not comfortable with this guy around here. Maybe Kraft went to Belichick and said, well, let's do it this way. Tom's done a lot for the organization. Now, all that said, even if that happened, I don't think it's anything different from what happens in any organization. It's only interesting from the standpoint of where all those people are in their careers and uh, where the uh, Patriots dynasty is in its extended history. So, Maybe so. But I'll yeah. tell you this. If Tom Brady, let's say they win that game and Brady gets injured and is not able to play in the AFC mm -hmm. Championship game, I'm going to wonder what Bill Belichick will be thinking then or Kraft or whomever decided to make this deal because right. that won't look very smart. Right. Anyway, we're due for a break. Number is 412-575-2600. We'll also talk about the Penguins. They're in a bye break. And we're right now, because of their win last night in overtime against Boston, 
they would qualify for the playoffs, but certainly they have a lot of work to do. And do you think they are in need of something big, medium, or small? Whatever you think, let me know. 412 575 2600. That's the number of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We'll come back with your calls right after this. The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, putting new roofs on Pittsburgh homes for over 25 years. Call Ireland Contracting at 1-800-NEW-ROOF. 